Okay, thanks. So my name is Jody Bossio Smith. For those of you I may not have had the opportunity to connect with before. I'm currently serving as your Director of Assessment here at Maine DOE, and I'll pass it to my colleague, Michelle, to introduce herself. Michelle, you're muted. Hi, I'm Michelle Ganglefinger. I am fairly new to DOE. I have taken over the role as the MSAA Alternate Assessment Coordinator, as well as the English Language Proficiency Assessment Coordinator. And I will turn it over to Dr. Lewis. Good. Good afternoon, everyone. And I am Regina Lewis, also affectionately known by this team as Dr. G. And uh, I am the NEEP and International Assessments Coordinator. And I will pass it on to our darling Krista. Hi, everyone. I'm Krista Avro. I'm the Assessment Coordinator for the Maine Three Year Assessment as well as the Maine Science Assessment. And I'll pass it over to Daniela. Hi, my name is Daniela Krohn. I'm the office specialist for the assessment team. Thanks, Daniela. And Leah Jarvis is not typically in attendance at our office hours with the field. She is our business analyst liaising between the assessment team and the data team. And she makes the magic work behind the scenes in terms of orgs and student ID files, as well as doing data dives with us um, following post administration. The mission and vision of the Maine Department of Education is to promote the best learning opportunities for all Maine students by providing information, guidance, and support to schools, educators, and leaders, and by providing adequate and equitable school funding and resources. As a reminder, technical assistance, assessment technical assistance is available to all main SAUs upon request. We've had a couple of requests already um, at the beginning of this school year. It's a great opportunity for the team to support um, any district needs you may have in terms of state assessments. And it's also the best part of our job to be able to get out into the field and support Maine educators. We have our Maine Educational Assessments calendar here. And on the next slide, as a reminder, this is also posted to our Maine DOE website under the left-hand drop-down menu. Um, you'll see assessment calendar. Data requests. So suppressed data for 2021 to 2223 are currently available in the ESSA dashboard. Legacy data, so that suppressed data for years prior to those available in the ESSA dashboard are available via this link in the slides. And to access data from unavailable academic academic years or, for example, unsuppressed data, uh, please use the submit a data request form link at the bottom of the data warehouse page. And that, that link is also embedded in these slides, um, which I believe Daniela sent out to everyone this morning. And we'll go right into our assessment program. So preparing for the 24-25 main educational assessment. Okay, so we have our assessment security training and resource materials posted to our website. This includes the assessment security training video um, for both district and school assessment coordinators, our updated assessment security handbook for 24-25. The team worked during the summer to make sure that that document was more streamlined and updated. Um, and as always, we look at our resources with the lessons learned from the previous year in mind. Um, for assessment administrators and proctors, we have the five-minute assessment security overview webisode, um, as well as assessment irregularities, what now, which can support our test administrators in knowing what next steps to take in the event that a fire alarm goes off during an assessment or something else unexpected. All staff involved in the administration of Maine Educational Assessments or the MEA must sign the Security and Data Privacy Agreement which is included in Appendix A of the Assessment Security Handbook. 
um, this is also something that should be maintained uh, by the SAU throughout the current school year. We also have our updated main comprehensive assessment system guidelines. Again, like with our assessment security handbook, the team worked over the summer incorporating lessons learned from the 23-24 administrations um, to really streamline and uh, improve on our prior year's resource. This includes general information such as federal and state assessment requirements and participation requirements, um, information about exceptions such as an ex the example of a significant medical emergency, um, as well as student eligibility for the main educational assessments. Um, and how that data actually gets from our state enrollment system into our assessment platforms. So as a reminder, it's critically important that we're getting students enrolled. And we'll start with Krista with our main through year assessment, our general assessment in math and reading. Yes, excellent. So there are a lot of things happening right now with the main through year assessment as we're coming up on an administration window and closing out spring 23. So first, just addressing a question from the field about the spring 24 RIT scores. So just as a reminder, in late August, a priority notice went out from Maine DOE to superintendents, district assessment coordinators, principals, about the recalculation of the spring 24 RIT scores. And just as a reminder, essentially what happened was every summative question is aligned to the RIT scale, so to a difficulty level on the RIT scale. Um, but post-administration, what the psychometricians found was that the actual difficulty was higher than the expected difficulty and some adjustments were needed. These recalibrations of summative items impacted different grade levels to different degrees and it impacted different students to different degrees because it is an adaptive test and they don't all see the same questions. So you can see in the table that that range of change in the average scores was anywhere from as low as 0 0.15 RIT score points in grade 7 reading to as high as 5.45 RIT score points in high school reading. So high school reading was certainly the most greatly impacted by the rescoring as a high school summative reading items really required the greatest recalibration. And this is a helpful hint for accessing the ISRs. I will note that there was an error on my part for the title of this slide. So if you are viewing the slide from Daniela earlier, I do apologize, I have corrected it here. If you did previously access the Spring 24 ISRs in July in Acacia, please click Regenerate to ensure you're accessing the most up-to-date reports with page two removed. Page two had the instructional area of its scores and those have been removed for Spring 24. And just as a reminder about the supplemental page for families, Due to the removal of the instructional area descriptions, we are requiring for the spring administration that the appropriate grade level supplemental page for families be distributed with the individual student report. And we're happy to report that although we were previously already able to provide you with all of those pages in English, we now have the translations available as well on our web page. Also just bringing to your attention, we have two understanding scores for the main through year assessment sessions coming up on September 24th and October 10th. Um, we've offered these sessions in the past, but my hope is that with this iteration, I'll be able to revise and redesign the session based specifically on the questions that you share in advance of the session. So there's a link to the form there as well. And registrants um, will receive an email from me with a little reminder to please submit their questions via the form beforehand. I'd really like to make sure that our focus for these sessions is on what is immediately needed and useful to you in the field. And moving ahead to this academic year, so our required fall administration window opens up next Monday and goes through October 25th. As a reminder, your students have to be enrolled in Synergy in order to be in Acacia, and that ultimately is the responsibility of the SAU or school to ensure that your students are enrolled in Synergy before the first day of the local administration schedule. I recommend at least two business days so that our team has the opportunity to resolve any rostering errors 
um, but the students will not be in Acacia until they are in Synergy. Next slide, please. So preparing for the fall administration, so district and school assessment coordinator training. Um, all district and school assessment coordinators for all of the MEAs do need to complete that security training, which is the training video handbook and signing the security and data privacy agreement that's across the MEAs. In addition, for the through year assessment, there is a training module. That module was sent out to district assessment coordinators as identified in NEO on August 26th. If you did not receive an email on August 26th and you are a school or district assessment coordinator, then you need to request access to the module via the form linked in the slides, which is also on our website and on NWEA's connections page. Please keep a copy of the module completion certificate on hand um, throughout the school year. Proctor training. So again, throughout all of the MEAs, your proctors need to watch two security webinars and sign the security and data privacy agreement. There is also for the main through year assessment, a nine minute proctor training video that focuses on elements specific to that assessment. We've also done a little bit of revamping of one part of our website for the main through year assessment due to some feedback from the field and difficulty finding specific resources. So there's now a top drop down menu um, preparing for the assessment administration. And you can see here that the resources are organized by role. There's still a link at the top to the connection page, which has some additional resources, um, in particular in relation to things like rostering and the map growth platform. And this is a helpful hint on printing test tickets uh, due to some concerns that have come in from the field in just the last couple of days. So even though the window is not open yet, just a helpful reminder that to ensure all your students are able to assess when you want them to, please don't wait until the morning of the administration to print test tickets in case you do run into any issues. You do print those test tickets from Manage Online Testing, which you can access through either the monitor test icon on your homepage or through the menu under online testing. If you have a few students missing from Manage Online Testing, but they are in Acacia, you can force them to appear in Manage Online Testing. And I'm going to have Daniela go to the next slide so I can walk you through how that's done. So you'll want to go into that student's profile. I've removed the name here, of course, but the student's name would appear on the left. And you'd want to first click the Accessibility Supports tab. After that, the test administration will appear and you'll select Fall and click View Supports. Once you've done that, you will scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and click Save Updates. You don't actually need to update any designated supports and accommodations for this trick to work. Um, it's just going to force the student to have a test ticket and manage online testing. So if you're missing just a few kids, this is the way to go. If you're missing a lot of students, please reach out to NWEA Partner Support because we don't want you manually doing this if it's a lot of kids that you're trying to resolve. Also coming up, the virtual educator panel for high school content and bias review. We are still seeking participants for this. So this is October 22nd through the 24th in the evenings. And we're really looking for educators and school or SAU administrators with experience in high school math and or reading instruction and curriculum. So it's looking at questions that are intended to appear on future high school forms to ensure that they're appropriate, free of bias and aligned to our standards. Um, and a stipend is provided. So if you're interested, please complete the registration form um, so that we can get back to you and hopefully have a full panel. There are also many fall 24 NWEA PL offerings coming up. Um, we are offering two new series of sessions called Balanced Assessment Systems for Leaders and Student-Centered Assessment Literacy, in addition to repeating some sessions from last year. If you click that register link, it will provide you with descriptions of all of these sessions as well. And lastly, for the main three-year assessment, who do you reach out to if you're having problems? So NWEA main partner support is your contact for all technical issues, whether that's with the Acacia platform, the Secure Browser, or MARC, which is the Map Growth platform. Main DOE Medem's Help Desk is your resource if something is not looking right in Synergy or NEO. They're the people you want to reach out to. I am here. 
for any of your questions related to content, accessibility, scoring, reporting, policy, as well as if you have a student who is a NEO but not an Acacia, and it's been at least 36 hours since you've entered them in Synergy, reach out to me. Uh, we ask that you wait 36 hours because any rostering errors need to be resolved manually, and that can take a little bit of time. If you have a problem that you've brought to main partner support at NWEA or MEDEMS Help Desk and they're not able to resolve it, please reach out to me. If it is a problem with NWEA partner support, please provide the case number because that just makes our ability to address your concerns much more efficient when we have that information. I'm gonna switch gears to the main science assessment. So reports will be available in the Kite reporting platform in mid-October. We are on schedule for that uh, moving forward. So that's when you will have them. We are offering some understanding and utilizing score report sessions for the first time. So this will look at the three-dimensional nature of the next gener generation science standards and how those are reflected within the reports for this particular assessment and how you can use these reports to inform your educational decision-making. So something new we haven't offered before that I'm really excited we get to offer to you this fall. And it looks like it's far away, but it will be here before we know it. So just a quick reminder that your high school administration window is now separate from your grades five and eight administration window um, in response to requests from the field. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. G. Hello all, I just, we can very brief, not much new in national and international assessments. We're very blessed to have a year off for all of you folks. Uh, next slide. Just a reminder that NAEP is happening. It's just that Maine was not selected for the sample this year. There is a long-term trend assessment and also field testing for the use of student devices which is a up and coming feature of NAEP and for our future. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, the field test is part of the preparations for NAEP 2026. Um, we can expect some changes as because we will be requesting the use of student devices and there'll be some future inquiries about the what kind of features your devices offer in your school if you're part of that sample. Um, and NAPL is going to have a new um, frameworks for mathematics and reading in 2026, which is our next main NAEP. And then in 2028, we'll have feature the new science framework. So the assessment will be more closely aligned to the NGSS. Um, not not intentionally, but it is part of the design to have that multi um, multi dimensional uh, uh, you know, um, analysis and framework for the assessment. And I'm going to pass this on to Michelle. Hello. All right, we can go right to the next slide, Daniela. We'll talk about access and alternate access. We do have some important dates coming up very soon. Uh, this week, the alternate access reports are available. Those um, came out a little bit later this year due to standard setting, so those will be available. Uh, the reports will be available online on the 13th, and then on in October, the beginning of October, the reports will be available for in-district. This year's window for the access and the alternate access is January 6th through February 28th. Uh, so we can move on to the next slide. This year, the main DOE has scheduled two facilitated virtual workshops to be provided by WIDA. Both workshops are two-part webinar series. They're scheduled from 3.30 to 5 for each session. The planning with the WIDA ELD standards framework is going to take place on October 2nd and October 9th. Registration for that is due by September 25th. We have the second one is when language and disability meet. Planning instruction to support multilingual learners who are duly identified will take place on December 3rd and December 10th. Registration for that workshop is due by November 26th. And as you can see, there's QR codes right on the flyers that can be used to easily register for these events. 
Also, just want to point out that all main pre-K through 12 educators have free unlimited access to some self-paced workshops that offer relevant practical contact that will build capacity in supporting multilingual learners. Uh, you do have to have a Weeder Secure Portal account to access those. Um, and facilitated virtual workshop um, access, the um, self-paced workshops are available on that Weeder Secure Portal. Next slide. All right. And the department is also scheduled from webinars related to access testing in order to provide an overview of the general access, the alternate access, and then accessibility features and accommodations. Links to register for those webinars can be found on the main DOE um, PL event calendar. So if you would like to sign up for those, that information can be found there. And as Krista shared some contact information, I also have some contact information here of who to contact if any questions arise. So you can reach out to the WIDA Client Services or the um, DRC for questions, or you can always reach out to me. But there's the specific information of who you would reach out to. The MSAA, so oh, here's, I have some important dates on the next slide for the MSAA. Uh, right now, the platform, the reporting window has closed. And so access to the platform is currently unavailable as we're getting ready for the 2025 spring administration. Um, so on, it, not until February, but in February, the MSA platform will go live for the spring 2025. Maine DOE is going to, will create some, the TA accounts as it gets closer to, and then we're asking that in March, the final check for um, TCs to communicate any with just making sure that all the students are in, are in the system for the system to go live in March that when the administration window opens. So the window for this year is March 10th through April 25th. And that's for ELA literacy, math, and science. And then the reporting window is July 14th, 25th through 9 5. That's when us coordinators can go into the system to be able to print out the reports for the spring 25 administration. We also have some upcoming training opportunities for the MSAA. Links to register for those, these trainings can be found also on that main DOE professional learning event calendar. And so you can see the trainings there. Those will be offered throughout the fall and in, into January. Contact information for who to contact if you have questions related to the MSAA is found here. 